As we reach day eight of the Halderson trial, we're learning more details of the fake email accounts Chandler allegedly made to prove to his parents that he was enrolled at MATC. And new steps are being taken by the Biden administration to help Americans battle the rising COVID cases. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for joining us. We're going to begin with the weather today where dangerous wind chills will be moving into the area. Let's head to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Austin Kopitsky has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. It's a, the winds is a killer today. That's it. I mean, right there, you nailed it. It's really just those winds. The temperature is still at 12 degrees with no winds. It feels pretty decent, but then you tack on a 12 mile per hour breeze on our 12 degree day, and it feels like it's about two degrees below zero already. Now an alert day is going to go into effect here later on, especially late tonight, mainly for just tomorrow, but that's whenever our wind chills are going to get potentially even dangerous at times. Current temperatures even in single digits for some of our northernmost communities. Madison right now at about 12 degrees, mineral point 14, but our wind speeds ugh, between 10 and 20 miles per hour, so already bringing down those wind chills, but those wind chills are actually going to get a little bit worse. Wind chill advisories will go into effect tonight at midnight lasting all the way through noon on Thursday. So that's where we could see wind chills as low as 25 below zero. So get ready. If you weren't bundled up this morning, you have to be tomorrow. A high of only nine tomorrow as well. So even in the afternoon, wind chills are going to stay around zero or below. But make sure you stay tuned. I'll have more details on this, what to expect in your community, and a look at your extended forecast a little bit later on. All right, Austin, we'll check back. Thank you. We expect prosecutors to wrap up their portion of the Chandler Hall Alderson trial sometime today. They're on the eighth day of testimony. They began the day chipping away at Halderson's story about going to Madison College and verifying none of the people Chandler said worked there existed. They, they showed a court a series of email exchanges between Chandler, his father, and Chandler's supposed school advisors. The advisors' email accounts were in fact created by Chandler himself. Based on email records, investigators found that the advisors didn't advise any other students. The emails also also contains several spelling errors. It was discovered the accounts were created through the same IP address as the Halderson's Wi-Fi, and some of the accounts used Chandler's birthday as the password. School records show Halderson was not enrolled in the school in the spring or summer of 2021. If you want to get caught up, we have a page dedicated to the trial on channel3000.com. There you can watch a live stream of the trial and find day-by-day -day breakdowns of what has happened so far. We also have a full timeline of events from the case leading up to the trial. Again, you can find all this on channel3000. Com. Right now, Fitchburg police are looking for an armed robbery suspect that stole from a gas station last night. According to a police report, a man walked into the Capital Petro gas station on South Syene Road around 8 p.m. and held the cashier at gunpoint. The suspect got away with money and merchandise. The cashier was unharmed. A witness say the suspect sped away from the gas station in a newer model white SUV. Anyone with information asked to call Fitchburg police. The Madison Metropolitan School District has identified 817 new COVID cases among students and staff over the past week. According to the district's COVID dashboard, nearly 1,200 students and over 300 staff members have tested positive for the virus in the past two weeks. That's 50% of their total cases reported since the pandemic began. The Biden administration is taking new steps to help Americans battle rising COVID cases and hospitalizations from the Omicron variant. Elise Preston has the latest from New York. The Biden administration is making plans to ship 400 million N95 masks to pharmacies and community health centers. They're coming out of the strategic national stockpile and expected to be available next month. Health experts say the better quality masks are needed to protect from the Omicron variant. The reason I like those is they seal better up here at the nose, and when I'm working with the glasses, it's a lot easier to see. <laughs> so if it offers better protection, okay, great. I'm willing to wear it. COVID home tests are also becoming more accessible. Americans can order four free tests per residential address at covidtest.gov. After a soft launch yesterday, there were isolated problems with user address verification, but no significant issues have been reported. The government's latest steps come as Americans are battling a COVID surge. Cases are dropping in the Northeast, but nationwide, hospitalizations are at sky-high levels, with a seven-day average topping 137,000. 
In North Carolina, residents are waiting in long lines for COVID tests. The latest data shows one in three people tested statewide was positive for the virus. But one infectious disease expert is hopeful all the positive cases could help going forward. The many people have been vaccinated and had it, um, had, that will give us some degree of herd immunity going forward uh, and that the next variants that come will be variants that while they may be contagious don't cause a severe disease. State records show about 59 percent of residents in North Carolina are fully vaccinated. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. And China's crackdown on COVID-19 is now targeting pets. Animal lovers are outraged over Hong Kong's decision to kill thousands of hamsters after a handful of them tested positive. Authorities are raiding dozens of pet shops after, after an employee and a handful of hamsters caught COVID. The city has ordered the killing of about 2,000 of the small animals. Now anyone who bought a hamster in the past month must hand it over to be tested and possibly put down. Health officials say the risk risk of animals spreading the virus to people is very low. Millions of people around the world have pets and there have been no cases uh, proven of pets transmitting infection to other humans. China has a zero tolerance approach to COVID, locking down entire cities along with millions of people over just a few cases. As we enter a third year of the pandemic, blood shortages continue to cause problems for hospitals around the nation. The Red Cross has declared an emergency blood crisis for the first time ever. Blood is needed for trauma victims, labor and delivery, transplant patients and other conditions. But the Red Cross is now limiting distribution to hospitals. Omicron has also led to fewer donors and staff shortages for, for blood drives. Please go out and donate. I need it. Someone you know either needs it now or will need it at some point in their life. If you'd like to help the cause, you can sign up to donate at theredcross.org and look for blood drives in your area. If you have COVID, you can still donate. The Red Cross asks that you wait 14 days after a positive test and be symptom-free on donation day. The New York Attorney General's office says it has identified misleading statements and omissions in some of the Trump Organization's financial documents. AG Letitia James says her office intends to find out who's responsible for the discrepancies, but in order to do so, she needs the testimony of former President Trump, Donald Trump Jr., and Ivanka Trump. According to court documents, the alleged misstatements include the size of Trump's Trump Tower penthouse, Trump's liquidity, and the process that Trump associates used to reach valuation. The Trump Organization says these allegations are baseless. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. Demand for household products prevails despite rising inflation and a smooth ride awaits when you hit the road in these states. I'm Diane King Hall at the CBS Broadcast Center. I'll have those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. Water is one of nature's most beautiful and life-sustaining resources. At no fault of their own, many Wisconsin utility customers are facing a shutoff to their water service. This leaves them without the one life-giving resource we all take for granted. And those hardest hit are on fixed incomes, juggling multiple temporary jobs, or those who lost full-time jobs in sectors hardest hit by the pandemic. If someone you care about needs a hand up, your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your water, heat, and power on. If you are in danger of losing your water service, call 833-H2O-WISC, 833-426-9472. You may not ask for it, but we're here to help. If you stutter on the phone, speech to speech is for you. Hi, Nihada. This is Andy Smith, and I, I was calling to see if our home loan has been approved. A specially trained operator revoices the conversation to the person on the other end of the line. Hi, Nihada. This is Andy Smith, and I was calling to see if our home loan has been approved. Oh, Andy, we have great news. You've been approved for the full amount. To learn more about speech-to-speech -speech relay service, go to wisconsinrelay.com. From open borders, increasing crime, and rising inflation, Democrat policies are weakening America. When I ran in 2016, I intended to serve a second term and go home. 
But today, our nation is on a very dangerous path. If you could help make America safer and stronger, would you walk away? I've decided I can't. I'll stand and fight for freedom. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message, because I love America and Wisconsin, just like you. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still be free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Habitat homes are built and bought by the hardworking families that live in them. Through affordable mortgages backed by your donations, Habitat Dane County offers a chance for these families to invest in their future and their community. Please donate or volunteer today. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Winner of the National Edward R. Murrow Award for overall excellence in television. The earnings parade continues today with a slew of reports from heavy hitters. Procter & Gamble says net income totaled $4.2 billion on sales of nearly $21 billion. Shoppers were undeterred by higher prices and remained loyal to brands like Tide and Bounty. Bank of America is also out with its quarterly report card and profit beat expectations. The nation's second biggest bank says fourth quarter earnings topped $7 billion. Revenue totaled more than $22 billion as it raked in money from record asset management and investment banking fees. More than half of Americans are not ready for an emergency. According to a new survey by Bankrate, only about 4 in 10 people have enough savings to cover a $1,000 unexpected expense like a trip to the emergency room or an unplanned car repair. Others would have to scramble to find the means using a credit card or a personal loan. And check your GPS. It could be a rocky road ahead. Wallet Hub is out with its list of best and worst states to drive in. It's a green light in Iowa the number one place to drive. Oklahoma, Kansas, and North Carolina followed. On the flip side, Hawaii was the worst state. The site weighed factors like traffic congestion and gas prices, even number of car washes per capita. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane King-Hall. Thank you, Diane. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up eight points. The NASDAQ up 54. The S&P 500 up just about 17. Coming up, we'll have your ag numbers from the Midwest Farm Report, and we'll take a tour of one of the most expensive homes for sale in the world. Plus, some dangerous wind chills are blowing in this week. Austin's got your complete forecast when we come back. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy? Are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you, you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapies therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Supply chain backlogs, inflation, agitation. Here's an idea. If we make things here in America, supply chain issues won't be a thing anymore. That's exactly how we built the Bucks Arena. 
by having 80% of the materials come from Wisconsin. We did the same by paying higher wages. That's how you know as your senator, I'll get things done. Raising people's wages, make things in America, finally stand up to China. I'm Alex Lazary, and I approve this message because it's time to put more money in the pockets of working people. This guy bleeds green and gold, and now it could earn him a spot in the Packer Fan Hall of Fame. Josh Breider tells you how you could help make it happen. And we have an alert day in the forecast for our Thursday. I'll have details tomorrow morning from 4.30 to 7. News 3 Now's call for action has settled hundreds of area consumer disputes, but we can't do it without our dedicated team of volunteers. Would you like to join us? Contact Call for Action by phone or visit channel3000.com to fill out an application now. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report is at a conference this noon, so here are your farm numbers. Princess is on the market in Italy. The 16th century estate, known as the Villa Aurora, is among the most expensive homes for sale in the world with a valuation of more than a half a billion dollars. But it failed to sell at auction yesterday. The home comes with rare masterpieces from the art world and so many rooms that the current owner doesn't even bother to count them. Chris Livesey has a tour of the home and met the American-born princess who's ready to move out. Any Rome villa is bound to cost a princely sum. We're in the Aurora room. But the 16th century Villa Aurora comes with its own princess. There are 10 secret messages in each of these alcoves. And none are more colorful than Her Serene Highness, the Principessa Rita Boncompagni Ludovisi. One of the people from the Louvre was here, and she said, we have one of these at the Louvre, but this is in much better shape. You might know her better as Rita Jen Rett. In 1980, this Texas girl was married to South Carolina Congressman John Jen Rett when he was convicted of fraud. The next year, as her marriage was crumbling, she threw gasoline on the fiery scandal and posed for Playboy. She eventually found her footing in Manhattan real estate, helping Donald Trump broker his purchase of the General Motors building in 1998. That's the period when she met her second husband, a direct descendant of Pope Gregory XIII, Prince Niccolò Boncompagni Ludovisi. He died in 2018, sparking a bitter inheritance dispute between his children from a previous marriage and Princess Rita. Unable to resolve it, a court ordered the house to be auctioned off, leaving half the profit to the sons and half to the Principessa. The estimated value? $533 million dollars. It failed to attract any initial bids, so now it's up for auction starting at 320 million, still making it one of the most expensive homes in the world. For that price tag, you might expect a swimming pool or a tennis court. No, here you'll have to settle for a Renaissance masterpiece by none other than Caravaggio. It's called Jupiter, Neptune, and Pluto. It's the only ceiling painting he ever did. It feels like a museum with all the history here, but this was more than that. I mean, it was a home. Well, my heart will always be here. Now, the princess is still deciding on the next chapter of her life, but as for the villa, well, she thinks it's going to take someone like an Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos who can actually afford this treasure trove. And there's still some treasure that's lost inside. For instance, Galileo himself gazed upon the stars from this very rooftop, and she's convinced that two of his telescopes are still hiding in the ceiling. Chris Livesay, CBS News, Rome.
All right, Austin, what can you contribute to this? Mm. Our house buying fund? <laughs> I'll put in about 20 bucks here. Okay, we'll do a stationwide well, fund. We're about 500 million short. Yeah, there we go. We're, we're getting there. Hey, every step is a step in the right direction right there. But unfortunately, the steps that we've been taking in terms of our temperatures this morning, they've been taking steps in the wrong direction. Really cooling down quite a bit this morning. Falling temperatures continuing even throughout the afternoon. We're pretty much going to stay steady or drop another degree or two throughout the afternoon. But an alert day for Thursday. We're still looking at a few flurry chances this weekend. I still think our best shot to actually see a little bit of light accumulating snowfall still looks to be on Monday. So our current Doppler track not showing anything. A very calm actual look at our radar right now. And that also of course includes pretty much our entire state. We're going to stay dry today. We saw a lot of sunshine earlier. Generally partly cloudy skies are going to stick around for much of the rest of today. But take a peek at what our temperatures are going to look like for tomorrow morning. Right around zero between even zero and five degrees below zero. But why this is important is we're still going to see that northerly and northwesterly breeze continuing even through those morning hours tomorrow. It won't be too strong of a breeze, but it's going to be more than enough to really tank those wind chills. Now towards the afternoon, temperatures will jump back into the upper single digits, but then by Friday morning, we're going to be even colder outside on Friday morning. But with a lack of wind speeds on Friday, the wind chills should not be as bad as what we're expecting here for tomorrow. Now this model is showing between around 10 and 20 below with the winds that are expected. I do think it's a possibility to see them as low as even 20 to 25 below zero as well at times. So that's what we really have to watch out for for tomorrow. But then towards the afternoon, even though those temperatures rise to the upper upper single digits, we're only going to sit around zero or a little bit below for the actual wind chills. But notice how those wind chills won't nearly be as bad by the time we reach Friday morning. Even though the temperatures will be colder, it's just because we're not not expecting those winds to keep up. Now, wind chill advisories will go into effect for most of our communities here at midnight tonight, lasting through noon tomorrow. So it's really going to be a cold stretch that we're watching out for here. Again, wind chills as low as 20 to 25 degrees below zero at times. Most of the time, it's going to be between around 10 and 20 below. But even with those high temperatures of nine degrees expected, again, it's still going to feel like it's right around zero or even below. So not a lot of warmth over Overall, unfortunately, our high temperature trend keeps that going all the way through the end of our forecast, but we're not looking at a ton of snowfall chances here with this very cold air makes it a little bit tougher to actually see that snow developing and moving through, but we still do have a few chances here and there a flurry chance on Saturday, also Saturday night as well. And then come Monday, we could see a few scattered snow showers. It does look like we're tracking a clipper as of right now, but those are pretty hard to track at this point right now. It does look like we still could see some of those snow showers moving through and possibility of light accumulation, but that could definitely change in the next few days. So make sure you stay tuned. We will keep you posted with that. But for right now, that cold, it is on track and there's nothing stopping that. That is a January forecast. If I've ever oh, seen one. It is. All right, Austin, thank you. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. I'm next. Howard's working on something perfect for these cold winter days in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. Soup's on and I can't wait to share this one with you. It's got a secret ingredient that makes it, well, let's just say super. Don't you go anywhere. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Hello, I'm Roman Ryan of Ryan Funeral Homes. As a locally owned and operated funeral home, it's important to know that not all funeral homes are the same. Some other Madison area funeral homes are actually owned by corporations based outside of the United States. A corporately owned funeral home is focused on the bottom line, making services more costly. We have served local families for more than 80 years, and our priority is investing in the community and your family. In your time of need, Ryan Funeral Homes are here for you. Washington Swamp. Ron Johnson's up to his neck in it. It's no surprise Johnson broke his promise to only serve two Senate terms as his net worth doubled in office. Johnson pushed for a new tax loophole for the wealthiest Americans, personally benefited from the tax break, and two of his biggest donors pocketed millions. Ron Johnson's deep in the swamp, out for himself, not us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. You protected our rights, preserved our freedom. 
You may have even risked your life for us. Now, it's our turn to fight for you. Your local Wisconsin emergency, energy, and housing assistance providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund reward the service of our veterans with rental and energy support in their time of crisis. Apply today to get the fresh start you've earned. We know car accidents happen every day. Unfortunately, many of us don't know our rights when it happens to us. Victims often settle too soon and can't cover medical bills or long-term effects from the accident. Contact the personal injury attorneys at Gingrass, Thompson & Walks for a free consultation if you've suffered injury or loss due to a car accident. GTW attorneys are consistently recognized as the best and have won some of the biggest settlements and awards for their clients. Gingrass, Thompson & Walks. At Affordable Dentures and Implants, that moment when we see a patient smile is everything to us. So whether it's a single tooth, full dentures, or dental implants, we're here to help you. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. Go ahead and smile. This time of year, there's nothing better than sitting down to a bowl of something hot and comforting, like a steaming bowl of French onion soup topped with French bread and melty cheese. If you think this is something you can only get in a fancy restaurant, you're in for a surprise. Today we start by sauteing a good amount of onions in butter until they start to caramelize. Once they do, we add some beef broth, a bit of black pepper, and our secret ingredient some apple cider. We let this simmer for a bit before adding some Parmesan cheese and a splash of red wine. While all the flavors come together, we'll melt some Swiss cheese on slices of French bread. Now, doesn't this look amazing? The whole thing from start to finish takes no time, yet it tastes like it cooked all day. From the moment you put your spoon into this, it's comfort in every bite. It's rich, beefy and the onions are so sweet and tender. And the cheese topping, as they say in France, ooh la la. I suggest letting everyone try to guess what makes this taste so amazing before you tell them about our secret ingredient. To get the recipe for our to die for French onion soup, simply visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an internationally fancy way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Now I'm hungry. That looks good. All right, awesome. One final check of the weather. Howard's looking sharp today, and this afternoon we do have a high temperature of just around 15 degrees, but we're really going to see those temperatures actually falling. Most of this afternoon, they're generally going to be right around those lower teens and possibly some upper single digits for some of our northern communities. Now it's also on the breezy side of things outside, a northwesterly breeze of 10 to 20 miles per hour, making it feel quite cold outside already. Wind chills currently at zero or below right now, but it's going to stay that way for quite some time. Alert day in the forecast for Thursday. Low temperature around 5 below for tomorrow, but wind chills at about 10 to 25 below zero tomorrow morning. High temperature of 9 degrees, so those wind chills will get a little bit better, but they're going to stay below zero throughout the afternoon. And then another check of our extended forecast. I'd say our best shot to see some accumulating snowfall does look to be on Monday with that high of 17 degrees. A little bit of some light snow is possible, but afterwards, we cool back.